Hey, welcome to Palmer Station, Antarctica. My name is Dr. Jim McClintock. I'm a professor of polar and marine biology from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And I've just arrived here in Antarctica this morning. This is my 26th time I've been to Antarctica. And I'm really looking forward to coming up to FIT this spring and being part of your sustainability conference. One of the things that I study in Antarctica is how climate change is rewriting the marine systems on this Antarctic Peninsula where I'm sitting at this moment. And behind me is the Mar Glacier. Now, you might not believe this, but when my colleagues and I started to come down here, you know, 15, 20 years ago, the Mar Glacier was much closer to, to me than it is right now. In fact, the Mar Glacier has receded almost a half a mile uh, in the last 50 years. In fact, 87% of the glaciers up and down the western Antarctic Peninsula are in recession as I speak. And you might have read in the news lately or seen in the news that there are ice sheets thousands of feet thick attached to the Antarctic Peninsula that are on the edge of disintegrating. The latest one is called the Larsen Sea Ice Shelf. About 150 miles behind me as the crow flies. And when the Larsen Sea Ice Shelf breaks up and goes out to sea, we're talking about a piece of real estate that's the size of Delaware. These are very large chunks of ice that are breaking up. The good news is that when those ice sheets break up and melt, they don't contribute to sea level rise because they're already in the water, just like a glass of ice water. When the ice melts, it doesn't come over the top. The bad news though and concerning is that when these ice sheets break up, the ice on top of Antarctica that's miles thick is rolling towards the ocean and that movement towards the ocean is accelerated in the absence of these ice sheets. They're like, they're like barriers that are being lost. And so as we add CO2 to the atmosphere and we warm up our planet, these ice sheets are moving into the ocean more rapidly and that is contributing to sea level rise. That's part of the reason why today in Miami at a high tide you can have salt water in the streets. So these ice features are changing very dramatically. In fact, the other ice feature that I haven't mentioned is the annual sea ice that surrounds Antarctica. Doubles the size of a continent the size of India and China every year during the winter. That ice is much thinner, about three or four feet deep. And here where I'm sitting on the Antarctic Peninsula, that annual sea ice has disappeared uh, to the degree of about 40% is gone now. Um, and this is having a very significant effect on the marine ecology of the Antarctic Peninsula. And I want to tell you some stories about the marine life that's being impacted. And we're going to look another direction and I'm going to tell you the story of the Adelie penguin and how they're disappearing here in Antarctica. About 45 years ago on this island behind me, Torgerson Island, you can see in the distance, there were 15,000 breeding pairs of these beautiful little penguins. And a good friend of mine, Bill Frazier, who's one of the world's leading experts in penguin biology, came down here as a graduate student. And Bill's project as a graduate student was to tag 15,000 breeding pairs of Adelie penguins, uh, many of which were on this island behind me. Well, Bill has come back every year for 45 years and followed those 15,000 Adelie penguins. Bill can tell you whose cousin is related to whose uncle and how many eggs they laid in 1997. He's got one of the most comprehensive databases for penguins anywhere in the world. And the thing is that Bill told me recently when he was down here this year, that there are only 1,500 of those 15,000 penguins left. So 90% of the Adelie penguins that used to live behind me are gone. Why is this happening? Well, we know now that it's related to climate change. What's happening here on the peninsula is the weather is changing. It's getting warmer. It's snowing more. It's more humid. So the Adelie penguins come and they reach the island. They lay their eggs. And then sadly along comes an unseasonably late snowstorm and buries the whole colony in snow. And then when the snow melts, the eggs drown. So you can lose an entire generation of Adelie penguins in one of these unseasonable storms that's associated with the warming that's occurring. The other thing that's happening to the penguins is that they use the sea ice uh, to toboggan across on their bellies to get out to the rich krill grounds where they feed. 
Krill are these little shrimp-like animals that form the base of the food web here in Antarctica. Well, you don't have to use as much energy if you skim along the ice on your belly and get out to where you're eating. Now with the sea ice being depleted by warming, the penguins have to swim much further offshore to get to where they're feeding. And they have to burn a lot more energy to get out there. So they don't have as much energy left to raise their chicks and make sure that they succeed in life. And so the mortality of the chicks is going up because of this. And that's what Bill believes is going on. And then the other thing that's happening here is that krill, these quintessential uh, base of the food web organisms, are also disappearing because as teenagers, they live underneath the sea ice, feeding on little plant cells called diatoms. So you remove the sea ice, you remove the food source for krill, and the krill populations are becoming depleted. So you can see that the Adelie penguin is facing many, many challenges. The other marine life here that's associated with the sea ice is also challenged as that sea ice disappears. There are these beautiful Waddell seals who have ice chipping teeth and they go up under the sea ice, particularly the females when they're pregnant, and chip a hole through the ice and eventually they can chip a hole that's big enough that they can climb right up through the sea ice and lay and give birth, completely free of the predators. The leopard seals that are stalking seals and penguins along the coast here can't get up to get their young if they've been coming up through the hole in that ice. So it's a wonderful adaptation that these Waddell seals have to escape predation. Well as the sea ice disappears they're going to have to follow that sea ice down the coast as it recedes uh, and probably they will suffer some from having to move their habitat to a, a new place. And then of course there are the small things in the water. Uh, behind me in the sea here, there's very rich populations of plankton, little tiny plant cells we call phytoplankton, and bigger things called zooplankton that are feeding on the phytoplankton. These are the base of the food web as well. What's happening as it's warming is that some of the phytoplankton are having a difficult time surviving. And this has to do with the weather changing again. With the winds coming up stronger, the top of the ocean being churned, those little plant cells being pushed deeper by the churning water, they can't get enough sunlight and they're disappearing. And they happen to be the, the types of plant cells that the zooplankton like to eat, the krill like to eat. So the krill are suffering as the phytoplankton are being depleted. So we're seeing profound changes here on the peninsula. We're seeing a whole marine ecosystem that used to look uh, as a community dominated by the Adelie penguins and by these rich populations of phytoplankton um, changing in a matter of 10, 20, 30 years. And that's what's so dramatic right now about climate change on our planet. Change has always occurred in marine ecology in any sort of an ecological system. But these things usually happen over millennia, thousands and thousands of years. And what's happening here is happening over decades. The problem, of course, is that some of these organisms can't adapt rapidly enough to make it into the future. So we are going to lose some of them. There'll be some that survive, some that don't. And so we have to turn this around. Uh, we have to think about what we're doing to our planet by putting all this uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels. And our polar environments, where I'm sitting, are the canary in the coal mine. This is where you see change happen first and foremost. But you have to realize that the changes that are happening here are the kinds of changes that are coming to your backyard and that you may already be seeing. Changes in animal life when it's there. Some species are going to survive, others are going to have a difficult time. The warming of the Antarctic circumpolar current is going to affect currents all over the planet in the Pacific Ocean, in the Atlantic Ocean, and this in turn is going to affect what you're encountering at home. So here we are in Antarctica, and it's just an amazing place, a beautiful place to study how climate change is affecting our world. And I'm looking forward, like I said, to seeing you soon uh, at FIT. Thank you.